Chapter 11. How to bring the power in your word into action. In every word you use, there is a power germ which expands and projects itself in the direction your word indicates and ultimately develops into physical expression. For example, you wish the consciousness of joy. Repeat the word joy secretly, persistently and emphatically. The repetition of the word joy sets up a quality of vibration which causes the joy germ to begin to expand and project itself until your whole being is filled with joy. This is not a mere fancy, but a truth. Once you experience this power, you will daily prove to yourself that these facts have not been fabricated to fit a theory, but the theory has been built up by careful observation of facts. Everyone knows that joy comes from within. No one can give it to you. Another may give you cause for joy, but no one can be joyous for you. Joy is a state of consciousness, and consciousness is purely mental. Proward says the mental faculties always work under something which stimulates them, and the stimulus may come either from without, through the external senses, or from within, by the consciousness of something not perceptible on the physical plane. The recognition of this interior source of stimulus enables you to bring into your consciousness any state you desire. Once a thing seems normal to you, it is as surely yours, through the law of growth and attraction, as it is yours to know addition after you have learned the use of figures. This method of repeating the word makes the word in all of its limitless meaning yours, because words are the embodiment of thoughts, and thought is creative, neither good nor bad, simply creative. This is the reason why faith builds up and fear destroys. Only believe, and all things are possible unto you. It is faith that gives you dominion over every adverse circumstance or condition. It is your word of faith that sets you free, not faith in any specific thing or act, but simple faith in your best self in all ways. It is this ever-present creative power within the heart of the word that makes your health, your peace of mind, and your financial condition a reproduction of your most habitual thought. Try to believe and understand this, and you will find yourself master of every adverse circumstance or condition, for you will become a prince of power. End of chapter 11. Chapter 12. How to increase your faith. But you ask, how can I speak the word of faith when I have little or no faith? Every living thing has faith in something or somebody. Faith is that quality of power which gives the creative energy a corresponding vitality, and the vitality in the word of faith you use causes it to take corresponding physical form. Even intense fear is alive with faith. You fear smallpox because you believe it possible for you to contract it. You fear poverty and loneliness because you believe them possible for you. It is the faith which understands that every creation had its birth in the womb of thought words that gives you dominion over all things, your lesser self included. And this feeling of faith is increased and intensified through observing what it does. Your constant observation should be of your state of consciousness when you did, not when you hoped you might, but feared it was too good to be true. How did you feel that time when you simply had to bring yourself into a better frame of mind and did, or you had to have a certain thing and got it? Live these experiences over again and again mentally until you really feel in touch with the self which knows and does, and then the best there is, is yours. End of chapter 12. Chapter 13. The Reward of Increased Faith. Your desire to be your best has expanded your faith into the faith of the universe which knows no failure and has brought you into conscious realization that you are not a victim of the universe, but a part of it. Consequently, you are able to recognize that there is that within yourself which is able to make conscious contact with the universal law and enables you to press all the particular laws of nature, whether visible or invisible, into serving your particular demand or desire. Thereby you find yourself master, not a slave, of any situation. Troward tells us that this mastering is to be accomplished by knowledge, and the only knowledge which will afford this purpose in all its measureless immensity is the knowledge of the personal element in universal spirit and its reciprocity to our own personality. In other words, the words you think, the personality you feel yourself to be, are all reproductions in miniature of God or specialized universal spirit. All your word thoughts were God word forms before they were yours. The words you use are the instrument's channels through which the creative energy takes form. Naturally, this sensitive creative power can only reproduce in accordance with the instrument through which it passes. All disappointments and failures are the result of endeavoring to think one thing and produce another. This is just as impossible as it would be for an electric fan to be used for lighting purposes or for water to flow through a crooked pipe in a straight line. The water must take the shape of the pipe through which it flows. Even more truly this sensitive invisible substance must reproduce outwardly the shape of the thought word through which it passes. This is the law of its nature, therefore, it logically follows, as a man thinketh, so is he. 
Hence, when your thought or word form is in correspondence with the eternal constructive and forward movement of the universal law, then your mind is the mirror in which the infinite power and intelligence of the universe sees itself reproduced, and your individual life becomes one of harmony. End of chapter 13